Hello everybody, this is Tom from Fallen Oak Drums. This video is about the building of a segmented snare drum. This is similar to a stave shell snare drum as I have released on previous videos on this channel, but the segmented snare drum uh, is made up of a lot more little pieces, as you can see. Um, so I'm going to narrate over the video uh, in this one, uh, the audio that I that went along with the video it didn't come out so great. So um, anyway, here we go. Um, I have skipped uh, filming, taping the uh, the cutting and gluing of the segments together into these rings. But uh, the basic concept here is that you um, like the stave, uh, you use very specific length and uh, angles in those cuts, um, length of wood, angles of the cuts. Uh, you glue them together, you get yourself a whatever sided figure, I think it was eight segments per uh, ring that I have here, and uh, you make a number of those and you glue them together. And uh, so here you, you can see I've also skipped showing you how I glued together those first couple layers, but um, this part of the video is going to show me gluing the center ring of this drum, which is walnut, to those two other rings, which are ash. And so um, basically what you have here is going to be a five layer segmented drum with uh, four layers of ash and a, a layer of walnut in the middle. Um, so that's not mustard I just squeezed out there. That's actually glue. The mustard bottle just works really well for dispensing it. And uh, brush it on here. And I'll do the same to the uh, walnut ring. Slowing down so you can catch the great glue action. So it's all glued up, and um, you can see that I'm alternating where the joints are in these glue ups. Um, the idea there is that those end grain joints in the rings are not very strong, but uh, when you when you alternate. Um, the uh, position there, you get some good edge-to-edge -edge, uh, glue joints, and that's always better in woodworking. Glue just doesn't hold well to end grain. Um, and so I'm even using a, uh, a square here just to make sure that the alignment's good so that once all is said and done, my drum shell blank, um, I'll be able to mill it down to uh, a solid shell. Uh, I didn't want to skew um, those layers at all. Of course, got to use a lot of clamps. Make sure you get good joints. And um, I'm purposely just sort of gently clamping them together because those two glued surfaces, just uh, the wood wants to slide all over the place. Uh, you got to just kind of go easy until you establish uh, enough pressure, and then you can go to town tightening them down. Not too much. You don't want to squeeze out all the glue, but. Uh, Minor adjustments, and I get on with it. All right, so we're going to high speed mode. Got uh, a number of these same kind of bar clamps, but uh, then I run out. I have to use some old C clamps, but it gets the job done. I got uh, nice glue joints out of these clamps. So that's how it looks glued up and um, in a moment what we'll see is uh, the other two layers that I glued separately over here. And so now those are ready to be joined but what I'll do first is uh, using my sanding board that I've, I, I use usually on the edge of uh, stave drum shells just to get, get a nice even surface. I, I use that here just to get nice gluing surfaces. And I go into high speed mode here now just to relieve the boredom of this video. Um, but again, same deal. Glue both sides. Line it up so that the, uh, the joints are staggered. The end to end joints are staggered. 
and uh, skip the clamping. Now, moving on, uh, after everything's all dried, um, I decided to use my uh, bandsaw. I have a 14 inch bandsaw, so uh, plenty, plenty uh, wide enough to cut off the, um, the points, cut off the, uh, the protruding uh, corners here. Um, and, and the idea here was just to do less with the, uh, the router when I'm, when I'm milling the outside of this thing. Um, you know, why make that router bit all, do all that work when the bandsaw blade can do it much more easily. So now it's all, you know, sort of round. All those points are gone. And uh, I'm getting ready to put it into the outer milling jig, which is over here on the router table. So skip ahead now to everything lined up on the router table. Um, and here's some live action of the milling. Um, that is a router lift in there. You can see that little nut on the left that's used to raise and lower the router bit. Um, and so that's me <laughs> raising it up to the next level. Sorry about the jerky fast video. Not real great there. Um, but as you can see now the bit is lined up uh, a little bit to, to take off a little more meat in the shell. And um, the goal here is to get it down pretty close to those um, end pieces which are made of MDF and are approximately the diameter I need, which is 13 and 7 eighths. But I use a cloth uh, measuring tape actually to measure the circumference uh, in between um, runs of, of this outer milling just to make sure I get it as close to perfect as I can. So now here it is off of the jig and I've got all these uh, inside surfaces that are very uneven from the segments. and um, I got to do something about those because my router sled for the intermilling jig does not want to get through there very easily with all those protruding edges. So here I am with a Japanese pulse uh, doing that uh, very labor intensive job, uh, which I did not enjoy at all. So um, I just kind of didn't include a lot of that in the final cut here. Um, so now here I am on the intermilling jig, and uh, this jig has been improved a little bit since my oak stave snare drum. You can see on the top there, I now have uh, these brackets that I made with uh, bearings so that the shell can't really jump um, out of the, the bottom guides, I guess. Um, I, you might remember if you watched my other videos that I had some problems. Um, with that, I, I got some gouges because the, the shell just wasn't held in there well enough. And I've got a little uh, in-between shot here. You can see where the bit is, is biting into the, the walnut there in the middle in particular. Um, but that's just part way through that cut. And now this is a little bit later and you can see I'm starting to get it down. But there's still big, um, you know, big deviations, I guess, in, uh, in terms of the inside roundness. It's not very round at all yet. You're seeing a little bit of rounding on the outer edge there, but a lot more to go. And um, next time I make one of these segmented shells, I think I'm going to try to round out the inside before I even glue them together. See how that works out. Um, I did get, uh, I had some splits that I, I didn't notice when I was selecting the wood. Fortunately, with that one um, and, and with another one, uh, the, the inside bearing edge takes care of that. That'll be cut at 45 degrees inward, and so it won't be a problem. So now uh, I've advanced it to where the inside is uh, is very round. I don't I don't think I'm quite done there because um, I'm actually going to mill down uh, the center portion of the inside of the shell to a quarter inch, and I'll leave the outer edges at three eighths of an inch, and that's to sort of simulate a, a reinforcement ring, um, which on some older drums and even some current drums, it's it's usually a separate piece of wood that's steam bent and uh, and put in to stiffen up the shell. Um, but since I'm milling this thing, I can just, you know, mill the, uh, the inside of the uh, drum a little bit thinner. And you can see it here on this shot where I, I've done that inner milling and there's a little bit of an edge at the top and bottom. Um, I've also proceeded to doing those bearing edges. Those are cut at 45 degrees now on the inside, round over on the outside, and um, Basically, this you know this drum has been sanded and everything is ready for finishing. And here we are, advanced into finishing. And I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't uh, film or take any pictures of the staining. But I used three coats of uh, water-based orange stain to get that nice deep orange. And now I'm using um, clear glossy uh, lacquer 
on the outside. And this is the first drum that I've used this on. I bought the lacquer actually to re try to repair some other drums, learned how to use it, um, and I decided I really liked it. Um, and the process here is that you can put on several coats close together because the lacquer melts into itself, dries pretty quickly, and uh, as long as you turn the drum like I'm doing there, you can avoid most of the drips. Um, and then you do wet sanding and finally uh, polishing to, to bring the shine back up and get a nice even glossy shine. Now it doesn't look super great here, but uh, the final result came out really nice. Um, you know, after all, you know, after I did a lot more work and, uh, and applied paste wax. Um, antique oil finish, I just used a, a coat of this on the inside to bring out some of that nice wood grain. And then we move on to the actual, um, you know, drilling of, uh, of the holes that I need for the, the drum hardware. Um, this is me lining up where the lugs are going to go. Um, right in the center in this case, I have uh, single point lugs that are going on here. And so I use an awl to start those holes and a little bit of live action um, awl work for your enjoyment. And after the awl, I start out with a very small drill bit. Uh, I believe it was a sixteenth of an inch just to establish that hole. Um, try to drill them pretty straight. Uh, it's a thin shell though, so you know there's not too much risk of it going too far awry. Um, I, I noticed when I was viewing this earlier that drill bit really seems to bend when I push it down. But uh, then moving up to a bigger drill bit that's probably an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit bigger through those same holes. And then finally I moved to these step drill bits, which I really like. Um, I didn't discover them initially when I was building drums, but uh, they cut really nice holes in the hardwood. Um, don't leave many, uh, you know, it doesn't blow out the wood too bad like some regular drill bits will. Um, and I'm you know, just testing the, the lugs to make sure they fit. And uh, now I'm drilling for the snare strainer here. Not that this is any really different than um, and for the lugs, uh, slightly different hole size. And in a second, you'll see me quickly try to fit a screw through there. And then there's the snare strainer. You'll see more of that later. But uh, anyway, um, done with all the hole drilling. Um, and I move on to the snare bed. And the snare bed goes on the, uh, the bottom rim of the drum. And it, it lines up with the snare wires where they... Um, where they come in contact with the bearing edge and the idea is to create a, a lower part of that uh, bearing edge so that the snares uh, stay in better contact with uh, the head and you don't get the super annoying buzz that you can get on, on cheap snare drums that don't have a snare bed. Um, and so I, you know, I've, I've missed doing that. I uh, just kind of forgot it on some drums I've built and it's really evident when you, uh, when you, Put everything together put the heads on the wires on it just sounds terrible so uh now i remember every time and uh you know i i never left one without a snare bed you got to go back and, and put it in if you forget that's uh that's my view on it anyway um there i'm sort of tapering up back to the level of the rest of the bearing edge so yeah really nice smooth surface um you know real gradual decline into that snare bed and uh just a little bit of sanding to Finish it off nicely. And then here's a couple of stills of uh, building up the uh, hardware onto the shell. Kind of my favorite part. It all comes together. Um, I just used some, uh, some used heads on this thing. I had some decent used heads, so they don't look real great, but uh, they sound good. And uh, here's what it sounds like. And so that's the show. Pretty uh, condensed, uh, but uh, it's the basics of building a segmented snare drum. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave comments and questions uh, below. I'd love to get those comments, and I'll be uh, I'll be happy to answer them if I can. Uh, thanks again, and uh, hope to see you on the next one.